this is the question. A bunch of information, um, but to design to show you that you know most of the information. You just have to just adjust and adapt to the exams now. Client presented to the emergency room. What? A client with the history of hypertension, epilepidemia, presented to the emergency room with what? Addict, photophobia, and dizziness. Client that's not been taking uh, uh, the blood pressure medications that usually takes. Systolic blood pressure was nine, 190. Client was admitted with what? Hypertensive emergency and treated appropriately with nitroprusside drip. All I've told you here is patient came in with what? Hypertensive emergency and was treated with nitroprusside after admission. Then 48 hours after admission, what happened? A new onset of what? Atrial fibrillation. Uh, patient developed that. And then for patient, we started with what? Metropolar, digoxin, amiodarone for rate control. Now we have, we have changed gears, right? We're dealing with what? New AFib, and then we've been giving appropriate medication. Another changing gear, three changes. Six months later, patient present and complain about what? Cold intolerance, weight gain, and fatigue. What do you think? Dry cough and dizziness. Other symptoms include right upper quadrant pain, play colored stool, and AST of 250. I'm not done yet. The skin has blue gray discoloration hue to it. Pins and needles of the feet, pain with eye movement, blurring, and a blind spot, a bunch of information, and a lot of signs and symptoms. But if you, you, you have to be able to recognize cues from these questions. There is a key information I'm giving you. I'm using something you already know and made it in the sentence. You, you just have to be patient and read it carefully between the lines and you'll be able to figure it out what is the question that's where you have to pay attention to complete the following sentence by choosing from the list of options the next suspect that the client condition is most what most likely related to what related to what hypertension um metropolar digoxin Amiodron and nitroprusside. This is a priority question because it's most, most likely. Why is it most likely related to any of them? You go back and see and look at the sentences and see whether this symptoms is consistent with that. Look at it. Code intolerance, weight gain and fatigue. What does it tell you? This sound like hypothyroidism. For me, right now, you're telling me something about hypothyroidism. Right? So, some thyroid problem here. Thyroid problem, I'll put it here. Dry cough and dyspnea. Mm -hmm. Some lung problem, right? Other symptoms of right upper quadrant pain, clay college to and AST. When do you develop this? Right upper quadrant pain, clay college to AST. I'm having some liver problem. The skin has blue, what? Gray coloration to it. I have dermatitis here. I have pins and needles of the feet. Wow. That is peripheral neuropathy. We have pain with high movement and blaring and blind spot. This is optic neuropathy. What have I given to you? This is what we call P clone. Have you heard this before? I've taught you this before, P clone. What is P clone? These are signs and symptoms of amiodarone side effect. P is pulmonary fibrosis. C is what? Cardiac toxicity, okay. L is the liver function test. It's going to be elevated. O is optic 
neuritis, neuropathy, and peripheral neuropathy, E endocrine, the TSH will go up or TSH will go down, and D, they, they have dermatitis. The number one symptoms that is the most prioritized is pulmonary fibrosis. Therefore, I've given you all the signs and symptoms of amiodarone side effects in the case form, and you have to break it down and find the answer from it. That is all. You know it, but you have to like think about it based on what I've given you. Therefore, the next suspect that the client condition is most likely related to what? Amiodarone. So amiodarone is your right answer. And these are the side effects of amiodarone. So I can, as you can see, you already know this information. I just took what you know and then change it into a case form. So as you study, pay attention to those signs and symptoms and be able to recognize some signs and symptoms and, and use those cues to make a diagnosis and you'll be able to answer any questions in the next generation. Remember, only about 10% of the test is going to be next generation type of question. The rest is still going to be the forward one. So take care of yourself and all the best of luck.